coming up on today's show, we are in Cleveland, Ohio, and boy, did we uncover some great stuff for you. Do you know that there's some whiskey made up here called Cleveland Whiskey? You won't believe this distillery we visited. And while we were at it, we had to stop by and see the Nautica Queen and take a little quick cruise on that and tell you a little bit about that. Also, if you need that sweet tooth filled, we got you covered on that as well. Stay with us. You don't want to miss one minute of today's show. Western Reserve Historical Society is the resource for history, artifacts, archives, and events for Cleveland, Akron, and all of Northeastern Ohio. The Historical Society's newest exhibits include Dior and Moore for the love of fashion and setting the world in motion. To find out more about these two exhibits, Mike met up with Derek Moore and Danielle Peck. Tell us a little bit about this, what people are going to find when they come to see this. Well, what they're going to find is they're going to find the story of the auto and aviation industry in the Western Reserve, Northeast Ohio, and uh, the impact it had on this area area as well as the impact that this area had on those two technologies and really bringing them to the foref forefront of transportation um, in the really this country and the world. Yeah and there, in this display it's not only about cars right there's other things. Right right it's about the people that were involved the entrepreneurs um, the auto industry the cars um, as well as the aviation technology the aircraft that were here um, the national air races that were held here um, as well as you know some of the other small things that happen in Cleveland. What's a reasonable amount of time to, to plan on if you're coming to the museum to look around? Well, if you really want to see everything, including the other portions of the society, um, you're going to want to spend you know at, at least a half a day, if not a whole day here, um, to see everything that we have on display. Fantastic. You know, one, one of the things that I always like, what was the most unusual piece that you have in this collection? Well, it's a good thing you asked that question because we're actually standing in front of it. Um, it's our 1932 Peerless uh, prototype. It is all aluminum uh, down to the engine and chassis, the body, and it is uh, the only one ever built. So it's the only place you'll ever see it. Tell us a little bit about this collection. It seems like an amazing amount to have. It is an amazing amount. We have about 13,000 hanging garments. The rest is made up of quilts, coverlets, anything else that could be considered a textile. And this exhibit, Dior and More for the Love of Fashion, focuses on some of our best haute couture, couture, ready-to-wear clothing from a whole range of designers, from Christian Dior to American designers, and a, a range from about 1890 to the 1980s. That's amazing. So what's the tie-in with Cleveland? How does this all work together? We with one exception, all of the items are from women from northeastern Ohio. Really? Yes. Uh, any famous women? Well, there's the one exception is Audrey Hepburn, who is featured. I think in we know who she is. But um, there's also some amazing clothes from women from the area that were worn by them, and um, definitely some significant people. Yeah. What was the motivation behind putting this together? It was really to show off what amazing pieces we have in the depth of the range of designers that are represented in the collection, which most people don't know about. Uh, Cleveland had a lot of very well dressed people. Yeah. It, it, is there any challenges in trying? to preserve and, and keep these things uh, alive, so to speak? Oh, a lot of challenges. A lot of the dresses have what we call inherent vice. There's a lot going on, and you can have modern materials that are breaking down. You have vinyls that are decomposing. Um, you can have silks that are being weighed down, shattered silks, all kinds of stuff. But these are all in tremendously good condition, which is just a testament. Located in Cleveland on Brook Park Road is the B.A. Sweetie Candy Company, the largest candy store in the U.S., housing over 400,000 pounds of candy under one roof. Judy Proboski gave us the details on the latest sweet treats and newest candy crazes. Give me a little of the history and the background on BA Sweeties. Well, the business is over 50 years old. Mm -hmm. Tom Scheiman and his wife Judy bought it about 32 years ago, and it's always been on Brook Park Road. There were three different locations, but always, and we've been here about 15 years at this location. Yeah. How many different can types of candy? I mean, you walk in there, it's overwhelming. Mm -hmm. We have over 5,000 different kinds of candy. You know, one of the things, it, it, you know, I've seen some of this candy that's kind of nostalgic to me, things that you don't see, mm -hmm. slow pokes and things like that. And why do you think a lot of that candy's come back now? For us, it's been around. Just some of the ones that 
they stopped making and then they brought them back because I think it's because people wanted it. We're, the older people are introducing it to their children and their grandchildren, and it's all good, so they love it. I think the dental association is behind us all. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> we have a connection. <laughs> so where did the name Be A Sweetie come from? Well, it used to be years ago when it was first conceived, it was Bag A Sweet. And the owner, Tom, wanted to keep the B.A., so he made it just B period, A period, B.A. Sweetie Candy Company. Because ah, there's a neat name for that. to keep it. Who's your customer? Who comes in here? Retail. Everybody. The older people come in for their favorites, the hard candy, and the younger people come in for the sours. And then we have people who come in for weddings and showers. And stores. We have a lot of uh, wholesale customers. Right. Now, how how big is this warehouse we're in right now, or this the store? This is, I think, around twenty thousand square feet. Yes, this is phenomenal. We are the largest candy store in the nation. Yeah. Well, we're stocking five thousand items. I would think that mm -hmm. if you can't find it here, it just isn't around. <laughs> You're right. You're right. We try to get everything that's things that have been discontinued and come back. We we have them. We get them here. So I guess the big question, Judy, is for folks who can't travel from Columbus or not coming up soon, do you have a, a way to buy the stuff online? Yes, we do. Yes, our online business is carried out right back here, too. So they pull everything from the store. What's your website now, and what are your store hours and information? Sweetiescandy.com, and we're open from uh, 10 to 8, Monday through Saturday, and 11 to 5 on Sunday. Just right down the road from the B.A. Sweetie Candy Company is Sweetie's Golf Land. Currently open for the 2013 season, this miniature golf course is great family fun and has a full concession and ice cream stand that features over 90 candy toppings. Noah Butcher gave Mike some tips on beating the hardest hole on the course and when the new B.A. Sweeties will be ready for the public. So give us a little bit of the background on uh, the golf land here. Uh, well, B.A. Sweetie is uh, moving right over here. Uh, behind us, they're building uh, the new building for the candy store. And this was a, came along with it and they figured, well, hey, you know what? It's a whole nother little thing. You get candy, come over and play a little golf, get a little ice cream. If you're over here playing golf and getting ice cream, you can go over and get candy. So it's like a two for one thing. Well, that's fantastic. Now, how many whole miniature golf courses is this? There are two courses. There are 18 holes each, so 36 total. What do you think makes this course so unique? Uh, unique, I think it's the greens because a lot of the greens are they're easier to just kind of, if you're practicing your putting game, you can come here. There's a lot of flatter ones and whatnot. We don't have a lot of the windmills, you know, the loop-de-loops and stuff. It's just and a lot of professional golfers prefer it to just kind of come out here and practice uh, putting. Yeah. <laughs> So what do you think is the most difficult hole on the course? Uh, actually, the one right behind us. It's the only hole you cannot get a hole in one unless you chip it over the rocks. There's no possible way to get a hole in one. No possible way. No possible way. <laughs> or at least we haven't come up with one yet. So let's talk a little bit about the construction and Sweeties come in here. How, how big a warehouse is that going to be next door? And, and is it going to have all the retail like it, it, where it is now? Yep, it's going to have all the retail, just more of it. Um, it's I believe it's around 30,000 square feet. Um, they can correct me if I'm wrong on that, but it's around that number. So it's going to be pretty big, very big. So what's the expected date for that to open? Um, I'm not sure exactly the day that they're going to open that. I know by Halloween there should be a shell of a building there and whatnot. That's the plan. So, so hopefully next year we'll see Sweetie's Angler. A year or two. Give it about a year or two. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about your grill here. I know what's kind of interesting is you don't sell the candies that B.A. Sweetie has, but no, I can get the toppings, else. right? Yes. We have actually 94 candy toppings. You can put it on your ice cream. Um, we had about 115 last year. We took it down to the favorites this year so what people mo liked most last year so you're telling me 94 favorites 94 favorites yes 94 favorites <laughs> fantastic well i gotta tell you man it's a great place to come up and enjoy a game of miniature golf as well as get yeah. something sweet to eat right yep well thank you for coming out yes yes all right Noah. thanks for being on the show stay up to date with all the latest news events and information from out and about columbus by liking us on facebook go to facebook.com forward slash out and about columbus
The Ferrante Winery and Restaurant is truly a one-of-a-kind destination in northeastern Ohio, conveniently located a half mile off of I-90. After watching their bottling process and touring the winery, we ran into Alyssa Sakarik and she gave us the insight on a few of their special upcoming events. Experience is a big thing that we take very seriously around here. We look to give guests that visit from just around the area and guests who come from all over to make this their vacation spot uh, the ultimate experience that we can. Uh, we pride ourselves on the staff that we have here. They're fantastic. They like to give not only education but a fun aspect of what a state-of-the-art winery really does. Uh, the restaurant helps us too with creating that ultimate experience where you're pairing these Italian inspired cuisines with the award-winning wines that come from the sellers right here on site. Tastings are available seven days a week so you can visit us if you're here on a Monday or a Tuesday. You can come in and get the full experience from the tasting room staff. Uh, if you visit us Wednesday through Sunday, the restaurant is open and you can also visit the tasting room. Tours we do offer from Memorial Day weekend to Labor Day weekend. Um, if we start harvest early, which I don't think is going to be the case this year just because of the weather, but if we do start to harvest earlier, we will start to um, end the tours for the season. But you can always come in on a Saturday or Sunday, Memorial Day weekend through Labor Day weekend at 1, 2, or 3 p.m. and they can come and they can actually see where everything takes place. So from start to finish, from the grapes in the vineyards to the glass, the very end. So it's always very exciting for guests to see. The harvest season is big for us around here. So we've liked to create different events that kind of capture the essence of the excitement in the area. We have Lobsters and Leaves, which is the fourth year. This year will be the fourth year, which is exciting for us. Uh, Lobsters and Leaves is inspired around the harvest season. We have um, a petite filet served with lobster. We do seasonal root vegetables and we also do a nice harvest dessert and we'll be doing it this year Sunday the 8th. Uh, they're all prepaid reservations so reservations do book up pretty quickly uh, but if you call you can get a nice um, table in the restaurant for the event and you'll be taken care of from start to finish. In addition to the lobsters and leaves we have our covered bridge trolley tour. Uh, the covered bridge trolley tour is um, also in the fourth year. We rent a trolley and we visit three of the historic covered bridges in Asheville County. Then when guests return back to the winery we serve the, um, them a dinner, a cavatel dinner and that is October 6th and October 13th. Guests can call in advance too. It's definitely recommended to call in advance. The Nautica Queen is an exciting dinner cruise ship that offers a unique experience in lakefront and river cruise dining for people of all ages and interests in Cleveland. Mike met up with the captain Jim Dale and they discussed several of the amenities that the Nautica Queen offers throughout its operating schedule. So tell a visitor coming to Cleveland what would they expect on a Nautica Queen? We cruise Easter to New Year's. So we have a very long season and uh, typically we'll cruise lunch and dinner cruises mm -hmm. and then we have the occasional charters for weddings and corporate events and uh, uh, family functions that sort of thing. We, uh, we, go, uh, we go right through the holidays. In fact we get busy around the holidays. Do you have a tree on the boat during Christmas time? Not only do we have a tree and packages but for Halloween we have uh, festivities. For Easter we have the Easter Bunny for so, uh, so you deck the boat for everything. Do it up. We do it up. Give us a kind of a feeling of what that visitor is going to find on board. Well, uh, some some cruise ships have a have a uh, a feel of a, a boat ride. We're actually a restaurant that happens to be a boat. Yeah. So we leave the dock. We have uh, a full four, four or five course meal, uh, buffet style, and our chefs prepare everything on board. My favorite is Sunday brunch. We have uh, we're always sold out for Sunday brunch, but but usually we have themes for our dinners. Wednesday night is uh, uh, like a, a tropical night. Yeah. Friday night's wine on the water, okay. and every night includes sunsets, which is a big deal. Yeah. Uh, so they say you can only find those in Key West. That's we, not true. We kind of cruise off into the sunset every night, and uh, now. If Mother Nature doesn't allow, then we have our uh, enclosed deck so that you can sit inside and drink while it's raining. Yeah, nice. Of course, no. And, and you can be outside too, right? <laughs> well, our observation deck is the most popular for uh, once dinner is done, once uh, we have everything uh, taken care of. You can take your drinks upstairs and sit and watch the uh, sun go down or watch the uh, uh, other boats on the water during our lunch cruises. So it's, it's a lot of fun. So people that are getting on board that want to do some other activities, such as getting married, 
corporate events, things like that. Tell us a little bit about that. We do uh, a number of weddings, uh, some of which I'm fortunate to preside over. So that's one of the favorite, my favorite things about, uh, about the job. I love to perform weddings. Um, we have corporate functions from uh, 50 people up to 300. How do we get more information from Columbus? www.nauticaqueen.com. 216-696-8888. Please come and see us. You will not be uh, disappointed. Uh, disappointed. Absolutely. The Hyatt Regency Cleveland at the Arcade is considered to be a jewel amongst the other downtown Cleveland hotels. Tim Meyer showed out and about Columbus a few of the hotel suites and gave us some good background information on the Hyatt Regency as well as the Cleveland metropolitan area. Tell us a little bit about the history of this building. I've never been here. This is beautiful. It's breathtaking. Welcome to Cleveland. Good to have you in town and your uh, viewers should come down and visit. The arcade, it was built in 1890 for $875,000 and it was the center of commerce for a lot of years here in downtown Cleveland. As you can see, the building itself, the arcade was renovated in 2001 for $62 million. This building, this arcade here is about 100 feet high and the length of a football field. There are 1,800 glass panels that light this atrium. How, how long did it take to do this renovation? I mean, this is, this is phenomenal inside. Well, it took a lot of years of finance, obviously, but uh, it was a three-year project from start to finish. So we were very fortunate as Hyatt to be part of that partnership, and we opened up a 300-room um, hotel as part of the arcade. Yeah, and, and it's just so breathtaking just to walk at it. It's so open. There are other businesses in here as well, right? Yeah, in addition to the hotel, we have a lot of tenants in the lower arcade. Uh, we're looking at some additional movement uh, in the future. Right now, we currently have a spa. We run a post office that's been in the building for over 50 years and an antique coin shop. So right now, we're looking at expanding that a little bit. We're putting some money into the property. We'll be renovating the hotel next year and then also doing renovation of the arcade. We're going to enhance the entryway because it's such a prominent building in the city and centrally located between the football field and the baseball field. So we get a lot of people that come in town for sports and other activities. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. I mean, why would we want people to come from Columbus up to Cleveland? What are they going to see when they come up here? Well, other than being the best hotel in town, obviously there are other things to do. Being located in the middle of downtown, right here close to the casino, which is a block and a half away, right out the back door of the hotel, we also have East 4th Street, which is a great promenade of restaurants and uh, bars for a lot of people to come in and enjoy some nightlife. After they spent a full down day in downtown seeing the city, everything from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame to the museums. There's just a lot to do in Cleveland these days, and we're seeing a lot of visitors come in from Ohio. Yeah. You know, one of the things I think is fascinating about Cleveland, it, it's it's like it's, it's reinventing itself now. Would that be a fair statement? That's a very fair statement. The city uh, was part of the old Rust Belt and uh, an old steel town, as they say, mm -hmm. but we're now changing things, and uh, it's not the old Cleveland that uh, your grandparents knew. So we're seeing a lot of people come into the hotel, into the city, and enjoy it. A lot of younger crowds right now, but a sophisticated crowd that's enjoying a lot of the new restaurant scene that's here in the city. If you've missed any of today's show, you can watch it online anytime. Outandaboutcolumbus.com. If you enjoy fresh quality seafood, Pier W is the place to experience brunch, lunch, cocktails, and dinner while enjoying your stay in Cleveland. The design of the restaurant's dining room frames the spectacular views of Lake Erie and the Cleveland skyline. Mark Kawada and Regan Reich told Mike about Pier W's breathtaking scenery and their fantastic fare. Tell me a little of the history on this restaurant. I know this is recently renovated, but it's got a long history here, right? Oh, it does. We've been here, next year we'll be here, have been here for 50 years. Um, it's an icon in the Cleveland scene. Um, you know, seven years ago, we shut down for about a year, put about three and a half million dollars into the restaurant and renovations and reopened again, and this is what you have. Yeah. So it has a great history. So visitors coming to the restaurant, tell us what they're going to find. Well, what they'll get is the only view of the sea on the lake. We're fortunate to have, uh, be right on Lake Erie, to have a great view of the city, of the lake, uh, and a lakefront view. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it's magnificent. To, it's it's kind of like a, a feeling like you're on a cruise ship when you sit in the restaurant. Oh, exactly. Uh, it, it, that's what everybody says. Even from the bottom of the restaurant, we have pictures, it looks like a mast of a whole sh of a ship, uh, to when you're sitting on the patio, you're sitting up there, you feel like you're on a cruise ship having a drink. Yeah. Now, another big thing that happened this year is you opened the patio up, right? Oh, yeah. Um, the patio has never been opened before. It's just been a big blank space. Uh, this year, we decided to open the patio. Um, like I said, 
said, it feels like you're on a cruise ship. Uh, you're in the middle of Ohio on a cruise ship uh, having a drink or something to eat up on yeah. the deck. Yeah, somebody blindfolded you and brought you in here. You wouldn't know you were on Lake Erie, right? No, you wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one of the things I couldn't help but notice is you have a beautiful Steinway piano sitting uh -huh. here. So I assume you have some entertainment. Yeah, we have a live piano player every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday for brunch um, from 7 to 10 o'clock at night and during the day from 10 in the morning to 2 in the afternoon. You, you've been written up in several publications. Oh, yeah. Let's talk a little bit about well, that. The biggest one, I think, was in travel and leisure. Uh, we were compared to restaurants in like Napa Valley, Hawaii, Key West, and one of the top five. And in, in all of those cities, Cleveland was included in it. So it's really exciting that we are <laughs> voted one of the most romantic restaurants in the country. Yeah, that's quite an honor. And, and also happy hour, right, is a, is a big deal. We have the number one happy hour in Cleveland. Um, it's only in the lounge right here. Um, but it's one, it is the best happy hour in Cleveland. Well, Mark, we had an opportunity to talk to Chef Reagan about uh, the menu here. And this is what he told us. I think one of the most important aspects of the menu is that it is seafood. 75% is seafood. Um, of that seafood, 100% of that seafood is what they call sustainable seafood. Uh, many of the fish varieties come from the North Atlantic. Um, some also do come from Hawaii, the Gulf, uh, and some, some places farther. But the most important aspect of it is that it's 100% sustainable um, and uh, featuring varieties. Uh, there's wild salmon, there's North Atlantic cod, um, there's Gulf shrimp. Uh, there's Hawaiian tuna. So Mark, what are your operating hours here? Okay, for lunch we're open from Monday through Friday from 11.30 to 2.30. Um, we're open Sunday for brunch from 9.30 to 2.30. Um, for dinner, Monday through Thursday, we're open from 5 to 10 o'clock. Friday and Saturday, we're open from 5 to 11 o'clock. And we're closed Sunday for lunch. If you want to enjoy a radically different experience, then a bottle of Cleveland whiskey is the way to go. Tom Licks has developed a process that ages bourbon in one week, and it comes out with a very smooth taste. Mike tried a shot of Cleveland whiskey and was surprised to find how different Cleveland whiskey is compared to other national brands. It's amazing to see this, number one, and I know this has grown in popularity a lot. Let's talk about the taste testing that you're doing. You're sure. actually taste testing this Cleveland black bourbon against a Kentucky yes. bourbon, right? Yes. Why is that, and what is that process? Uh, well, you know, we, we wanted to do a fair test, so we picked another brand. We picked we use Knob Creek in our blind taste tests. Mm -hmm. uh, we've done over 2,000 of them so far, and uh, we're running about 56% in favor of our product in a blind taste testing. You know, we, we use a different technology. We approach it a little bit differently so we felt like we really had to go into the marketplace and show people that we had a good product. Yeah. Now one of the things that makes us unique is that you can age this product the technology that you're using right tell us a little bit about that. Well you know I, I like to think that age is really irrele irrelevant that's been something the industry has done for a long time it's like okay it takes a long time be patient about it that's their marketing that's their approach I'm just not that patient a person you know I, I want to get to the taste and I want to make something that tastes really good and I think we do, and we use something called pressure aging, where we have some technology that allows us to age it faster, but I also believe better than just letting it sit in a barrel for 8 or 10 or 12 years. You're gaining a lot of popularity throughout the state of Ohio. Uh, we were talking on camera a little bit about your seeing us up in Columbus, and, and you're actually your next challenge is actually going outside the state, yes. right? Tell us a little yes. bit about that. Uh, you know, we, we've, uh, we've had difficulty keeping up with demand right from the beginning. We were producing, March 1st, we started producing 1,000 bottles a week. Uh, got to 2,000 bottles a week July 1st. Now we're up to 3,000 bottles a week, but we're still having trouble meeting demand right here in our home state of Ohio. Uh, but we're looking a little bit further in advance. We want to get into Chicago markets, other major metropolitan areas where I think they'll appreciate the product. You, you do, I have a job of marketing this. I mean, we, we, we see it out there quite a bit. Is it the geography? Is it the name? What do you, what do you think? Uh, you know, that's a, that's a great question. I love that because we did a whole lot of research in the beginning to say what was the really the right brand name for at least our first couple of products. We did some research to narrow down the list of about four or five names of which our Cleveland brand was one. Uh, we did research around the country. We did, uh, I think, about 604 interviews. Uh, not surprisingly, the Cleveland brand did best right here in the Cleveland metropolitan area. It's the one people would be most likely to buy at the right price points and everything else. Uh, but what 
did get us was the fact that it also tested best in Boston, in Seattle, in Los Angeles, in Dallas, in Chicago. And, and of course we wanted to know why and people said well they felt that Cleveland was authentic and genuine, that it was entrepreneurial, that it was hard working and that it was edgy. So we said great, this is a brand we're going to take national, ultimately internationally. There's a big demand for this. Holden Arboretum is not only an arboretum, but a place for family and friends to attend special events while learning about nature. Out and About Columbus learned a little bit more about their specific events coming up for the fall season, including Goblins in the Garden, after we caught up with Vicki McDonald. An arboretum is an outdoor living museum. So at the Holden Arboretum, we focus on trees and woody plants. During the summer, we have a garden concert series. We have people out in the display garden listening to live music. There's wonderful food. Uh, it's a great family environment. Those happen on Tuesday nights at 6.30 here at the Arboretum. And then with fall coming, everything changes. So we like to say that it's new every day here, and it's very true. So right now, we're ending summer. With fall coming, we'll have autumn colors, hiking trails, wine tasting events. And we also have Goblins in the Garden, a family-friendly event coming on October 5th and 6th. So Goblins in the Garden is a family event. Um, we welcome children of all ages to be here to dress up, to bring their dogs. Uh, we have different displays for the children to interact with. Um, we have a scarecrow contest, pumpkins, everything that you would imagine um, for a Halloween festival. Um, there's trick-or-treating, it's a non-scary sort of family event. Holden Arboretum is open daily from 9 to 5, so goblin hours are the same. We're open from 9 to 5. Um, and if you're coming up for the day, you don't have to book, you don't have to register. We have a $6 admission fee, children are $3, kids under 5 are free. So we're open year-round at the Arboretum. So you can come at any time. During winter, we offer activities like snowshoeing and classes. You can always hike the trails, and we welcome you at any time of the year. Absolute Hearing Solutions should be your only stop if you are in need of hearing assistance. With a variety of products that can be tailored to each individual, Absolute Hearing Solutions can help you enjoy the little things again. Greg Van Horsen told me about how tinnitus can affect your hearing every day. Tinnitus, um, we've heard of this. This is basically what? What, what kind of condition exists with that? Uh, well, several things. Well, first of all, even tendonitis is called tendonitis or tendonitis. Both are actually correct. Mm -hmm. uh, it's ringing to the ears, making some static in people's ears. Sometimes it can go high and go low, but depending on the volume, it can really kind of drive people crazy. Yeah. Um, is there any particular age group that, that you see this more out of than any other? Uh, typically, if someone could be born with it, uh, but it's more or less as they get older, it can get stronger, or if they were around lots of noise, a firecracker in the ear, all of a sudden you have ringing in the ears for your life. But a lot of times it's just hereditary and it can get stronger and stronger. Um, food allergies can even, can even cause it. There's a bunch of different things that actually cause it, but as you get older, probably 30 plus, unless you had something instant, a gun going off in your ear next to it can cause that quite often. Yeah, no. how, how does that affect your everyday hearing then when you, when you have that ringing? Well, it can cause a lot of different issues, mainly background noise, because you're hearing the hearing the rain, and it's causing irritation, and it's causing your your brain to kind of cycle back and forth, and ca cause a lot of confusion. Where when people are trying to talk to you, I can't hear you unless it's completely quiet, or even unless you're laying in white in bed, and it's completely quiet. Now you can't sleep at night because the ringing is too loud. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess you have some solutions for this, right? Uh, well, a lot of times hearing aids do do actually help mask that. Uh, a lot of times, about 50% of the times, it makes it actually decrease. Now there's actually products out there that actually are designed specifically just for tinnitus for actually helping with, um, with the patient with hearing aids. So we've actually had people come in with no hearing loss and we put these on and the ringing actually goes right away. 